Good evening. I hope everyone's doing okay out there. It is Friday. This is White Ash Flies with Colin Mahoney, and tonight we're presenting Cathay, a book of Chinese poems translated via Japanese and Italian by Ezra Pound and published in 1915. Ezra Pound writes under the title, For the most part, from the Chinese of Rihaku, from the notes of the late Ernest Fenelosa, and the decipherings of the professors Mori and Ariga. You can follow White Ashflies on SoundCloud, Spotify, and on Twitter at Colin Mahoney15. And now, Cathay by Ezra Pound on White Ashflies. Song of the Bowmen of Shu by Buno, reputedly 1100 BC. Here we are, picking the first fern shoots and saying, When shall we get back to our country? Here we are because we have the canine for our foemen. We have no comfort because of these Mongols. We grub the soft fern shoots. When anyone says, Return, the others are full of sorrow. Sorrowful minds. Sorrow is strong. We are hungry and thirsty. Our defense is not yet made sure. No one can let his friend return. We grub the old fern stalks. We say, Will we be let to go back in October? There is no ease in royal affairs. We have no comfort. Our sorrow is bitter, but we would not return to our country. What flower has come into blossom? Whose chariot? The general's. Horses, his horses even, are tired. They were strong. We have no rest. Three battles a month. By heaven his horses are tired. The generals are on them. The soldiers are by them. The horses are well trained. The generals have ivory arrows and quivers ornamented with fish skin. The enemy is swift. We must be careful. When we set out, the willows were drooping with spring. We come back in the snow. We go slowly. We are hungry and thirsty. Our mind is full of sorrow. Who will know of our grief? The Beautiful Toilet by Mei Sheng, 140 B.C. Blue. Blue is the grass about the river, and the willows have overfilled the close garden. And within, the mistress, in the midmost of her youth, white, white of face, hesitates, passing the door. Slender, she put forth a slender hand, And she was a courtesan in the old days, and she has married a sot, who now goes drunkenly out and leaves her too much alone. The River Song by Rihaku, 8th century A.D. This boat is of shato wood, and its gunnels are cut magnolia, Musicians with jeweled flutes and with pipes of gold fill full the sides in rows, and our wine is rich for a thousand cups. We carry singing girls, drift with the drifting water. Yet Senin needs a yellow stork for a charger, and all our seamen would follow the white gulls or ride them. Kutsu's prose song hangs with the sun and moon. 
King So's terraced palace is now but barren hill, but I draw pen on this barge, causing the five peaks to tremble. And I have joy in these words, like the joy of Blue Island. If glory could last forever, then the waters of Han would flow northward. And I have moped in the emperor's garden, awaiting an order to write. I looked at the dragon pond, with its willow-colored water just reflecting the sky's tinge, and heard the five-score nightingales aimlessly singing. The eastern wind brings the green color into the island grasses at Yeshu. The purple house and the crimson are full of spring softness. South of the pond, the willow tips are half blue and bluer. Their cords tangle in mist against the brocade-like palace. Vine strings a hundred feet long hang down from carved railings. And high over the willows, the fine birds sing to each other and listen, crying, Quan, Kuan, for the early wind and the feel of it. The wind bundles itself into a bluish cloud and wanders off. Over a thousand gates, over a thousand doors are the sounds of spring singing, and the emperor is at Ko. Five clouds hang aloft, bright on the purple sky. The imperial guards come forth from the golden house with their armor agleaming. The emperor in his jeweled car goes out to inspect his flowers. He goes out to Hori to look at the wing-flapping storks. He returns by way of Say Rock to hear the new nightingales, for the gardens at Jo Run are full of new nightingales. Their sound is mixed in this flute. Their voice is in the twelve pipes here. The River Merchant's Wife A Letter by Riha Ku While my hair was still cut straight across my forehead, you played about the front gate, pulling flowers. You came by on bamboo stilts, playing horse. You walked about my seat, playing with blue plums. And we went on living in the village of Chokan, two small people, without dislike or suspicion. At fourteen, I married my lord Yu. I never laughed, being bashful. Lowering my head, I looked at the wall. Called to a thousand times, I never looked back. At fifteen I stopped scowling. I desired my dust to be mingled with yours, forever and forever and forever. Why should I climb the lookout? At sixteen you departed. You went into far Kotu Yen, by the river of swirling eddies, and you have been gone five months. The monkeys make sorrowful noise overhead. You dragged your feet when you went out. By the gate now, the moss is grown, the different mosses, too deep to clear them away. The leaves fall early this autumn, in wind. The paired butterflies are already yellow with August, over the grass in the west garden. They hurt me. I grow older. If you are coming down through the narrows of the river Kiang, please let me know beforehand, and I will come out to meet you as far as Chofu Sa.